Hello, my name is Kevin Scalore. I work for the Montana Radio Company and I'm a wine fair volunteer. And with me today is Ray Reed. He's the director of the Montana Military Museum and also a wine fair volunteer. The 23rd annual Montana Military Museum Wine Fair is in support of the Montana Military Museum at Fort Harrison. It's going to be Friday, April 29th from 6.30 to 10.30 at the Helena Civic Center. And Ray, the first question is, what's the wine fair all about? Well, the Montana Military Museum Wine Fair actually started out as a, uh, a, a, a when we were doing air shows. And when the air shows quit, we decided to find a new venue. And of course, the Montana Military Museum has been around all those years. So this is the 23rd annual museum wine fair. So we've, we've done it. And we have two years that are, that are a bit COVID related. So we have had two years that we, are, we, we weren't here. Um, it supports the Montana Military Museum, which was uh, founded in 1984 and is 38 years young and growing. Right, and you've been there since, for how long? Uh, probably for my ever. I yeah. think, I think <laughs> I, they got me on an artifact thing. Yeah, you came yeah, in a box. I, 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 have, I, have a bo I have a number someplace yeah. in there, so. Yeah. Yes. So it's been in existence a long time, and uh, it's of course of big importance to helping out at the museum. It is, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, have received uh, through our funding uh, over $190,000 in funding from the wine fair alone. It's the only major fundraiser we have. Uh, we do memberships, we do donations, we, uh, and we get, get all of that. But the primary function, the largest grouping is from the wine fair. So for the last two years, we have not been able to access uh, that. So we've shrunk it just a little bit. So now it's time for us to get back and, and roll up s our sleeves and work on this thing again. Well, and the, the big important thing is you're an all volunteer force out at the museum. You don't pay salaries, you don't have, it's all volunteers, but you still need to buy things and do things in order right. to have great displays. So we're responsible for everything that's inside those museum walls. That's our responsibility, it exhibits education, uh, the visitors that come there, taking care of them, uh, running our gift shop is a portion of it we do. So yes, we are, it's very important. And being an all volunteer organization, we're always looking for volunteers. Right, and so the uh, idea of the museum is that you have a lot of visitors out there and they can be all kinds of groups. And of course we have some of the, the things that attract people to the museum yes. and you know, right here is one of them. That's right. The First Special Service Force course uh, uh, has been a major player, but we also have our Montana National Guard history, which is over 150 years old uh, this year, and uh, they have been involved in all uh, ma major uh, wars and, and conflicts uh, throughout ages. And in fact, we still have people, we probably have over 300 people right now deployed in for global terror. Right, and so it's not only uh, you know on an active guard facility, so you have uh, people in the National Guard and other service members can see the museum, and you're open on Thursdays. And other times mm -hmm. as we, uh, it, they, I get a call, in fact I got a call uh, earlier today and they want to come in on a Saturday. I said we'll make arrangements that bring it in. They, there's a small group that wants to come in for that. We uh, hosted the uh, uh, Center of Military History uh, group uh, last Tuesday. Uh, they needed to come in off cycle. So we, we're there probably every day if we need to be. Right, and you have a, a pretty good, uh, you have a lot of research that's starting to happen now. And what, what really is amazing to me is of course, not only the people that were veterans and say they wanna go through and see what you know, they can experience again, but you have a lot of young kids that come there now too. Well, we do, we have ha a star base, which is located at Fort Harrison, is coming down every Thursday, and they spend 30 minutes to an hour there. So we've had every one of the middle school groups, uh, this year, this week we had Smith, and last week we had Smith uh, Middle School. So uh, every week we have 20 to 30 young uh, 
students that come in. And it was funny, yesterday afternoon, a lady walks in and I recognized the boy was with her. He had said, Mom, we're going back to the museum. <laughs> so he came back out there with her and took her complete. I said, you just take her through the museum. You know what it is. And so she, he became our docent for the day and did the same thing. Well, it's a, it's a nice thing to see uh, the involvement. And the thing that makes the museum different, I think you've spoken to this before, is the idea of storytelling and what, that, what makes this museum maybe different than some others. And, and uh, everybody that comes in, they say, boy, you got that set up so that we can understand what happened in the Spanish-American War or in World War I or World War II or with one of the specific units. We, uh, th they understand that. And plus, we have people who walk around with them and answer questions if we have to, uh, you know, if they request it, uh, we'll give them that extra detail. We're always enhancing that. We have videos that are running all the way through the museum. It's just, a, it's a wonderful little place. I, I enjoy it. I mean, I, I, I can't believe that eight hours goes so fast. Well, the one thing is, is that it, it helps bring a lot of history to life. We see things in books. We might uh, have seen an odd movie here and there, but I think the big walk away from the, the takeaway from the museum is, well, I didn't know we did that or that happened. How do, Right. Nobody told me. And then, then the other thing is the family involvement because somebody will say, my grandpa, I think he was in the guard. So we go look around and maybe we'll find his name. We'll find uh, somebody from World War II. Uh, we have people who come in and specifically request us to find uh, I information on their loved ones. So it's, 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 it's a wonderful little place. And I think everybody that volunteers there ha ha feels good when they go home at the end of the day. And why don't you, you know, it's not only inside the museum, but it's outside too. Why don't you tell us about the Mercy Car? The well, we have, the, we have the 48 Mercy Car, which uh, we uh, moved from the Montana Historical Society. And thank goodness we did, because they've torn that parking lot completely apart because they're building that new building up there. So it would have had to be moved anyway. But we've had it out there since 2002, and we've completely immersed it, covered it, um, protected it, we're putting exhibits on the inside, it's available to the public, and it tells the story of the uh, freedom trains that we did in after World War II, and the Mercy Train was the thank you car that came back from the people of France, and it was full of gifts. It's, we have a few of the gifts available, and we have a lot of the story available. So as the weather is a little bit better, because it's not a heated car, but we'll, we can get people out there and they can go through the car and see all the exhibits. Yeah, and, and one of the things too is, a lot of people know this, maybe some people don't, uh, about the, uh, you know, the sled dog training and, and the history there, kind of unknown for some people, but of course Dave Armstrong, a long right. time. Uh, and we're doing, a, a, just to recognize that, we, we built a, a very nice bench in his honor, right? there at the museum. Now we're going to duplicate that and put the same bench and a kiosk up at Camp Rebonite so people can understand the play that uh, Camp Rebonite did during World War II. Of course, it was a CC camp, CCC camp uh, prior to that, but uh, it, the, the big play was World War II reception and dog training, and then it reverted back to the Forest Service, and the Forest Service has been very much in support of us putting up the kiosk and telling the story up there. Well, I think that everybody uh, should see the museum, obviously. And the big thing is we're coming into summer months. There'll be a lot of visitors in town. Right. And uh, to take people out to the museum is a wonderful idea. Right. There, and, and we have a big event on July 9th. We're going to do the 80th anniversary of the First Special Service Force. We have people coming in from all over the world for that event. And, uh, and another item that we just finished, we just finished the uh, Shorty Shope uh, mural, which is 24 feet wide, eight feet tall uh, at the service club. We just finished cleaning it and reappointing re it, getting rid of all the chips and protecting it for the future. So it's, you know, it was 80 years old. And we're going to recognize the artist, uh, Matt Egan, tonight at a program at 5.30. All right, a, a lot to see at the museum and people need to go there. And uh, one good start of how you can help out 
is to attend the wine fair and the wine fair has been going on for as we have mentioned a long time and we have a, a lot of people interested in the wine fair and who supports that uh, a number of wines available gusto distributing has been a partner for for a long time on this uh, 80 plus wines several micro brews hors d'oeuvres a wine fall uh, silent auction fill us in uh, there's even a, a, a wheelbarrow full of uh, wine that's going to be given away at, uh, as part of a raffle there's a giant cr uh, craft of wine that's going to be given away through a raffle uh, and the uh, uh, one of the things is Vans uh, Thriftway is providing our food and uh, they have been, done a great job with us in the past so we're excited about the whole thing we don't make it a dinner but we do have hors d'oeuvres and people can visit we consider it the icebreaker for uh hell in the area right in this area so and there you have a lot of uh tickets available uh, the tickets are 30 dollars in advance right. 40 dollars at the door so getting a ticket now is a, is a great idea it, and it'll you save you, you you can get your 10 you can use the $10 extra for the tokens to go through the different venues out there. So Right, and so you can get tickets from uh, Leslie's Hallmark, uh, Valley Banks, Montana Liquor Store, East Holland Liquor, Island Liquor, and of course at the museum and online at 406ticks.com. So a That's lot of exactly availability right. to get that. And we've mentioned some of the sponsors here too, and uh, a, a number of the volunteers have been doing a great job in in lining up sponsors and getting silent auction items, which is right. always kind of a eclectic uh, experience. It, it is, and uh, we, we have some of them on display here, uh, uh, but there's many, many more that are, uh, we're working through that process, and it's that's a busy process uh, to uh, make sure that they're properly recorded and their rec people are recognized for their donations. And I, I believe it, 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 everybody will have fun. You may find something that you want in that auction. We put a lot of stuff out there. So just come and take a look at it and uh, enjoy the music. We have music every year uh, from uh, Jack. Yeah, Jack Berry is gonna Jack be. Jack Berry, that's he, right. He uh, plays and sings and, and does that. And it's, it's just a very nice uh, background event and yeah. a chance to, well, it's been three years. That's right. So this, we're expecting that this is going to be like almost starting over in some regards because we've been away from it for, for the last couple of years. But let's hope people will get the idea and come in and right. spend, spend the time with us. And it's at the uh, Civic Center Ballroom uh, uh, on Neal Avenue. Uh, and it, you'll just have a great event. Just come, come and see us. And if you can't get the tickets in advance, well, you can always get them at the door. Right, and uh, a good thing is to maybe buy a bunch of tickets for your friends and bring them all in. That's right. I, 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 a lot of people do that as a gift. They'll buy a, a package of tickets and then they'll do, give them out to their friends and bring them all in. And it's a good way to have everybody come together. All right, and uh, I guess we couldn't let people go without just saying, we've got a lot of hats here. Why don't you tell us what's the, what's the big well, the, hat? The, the newest one is what we call the operator's hat, and this is very important uh, for Canadian and American Special Forces, and the, the very much of a hot item. Uh, all these represent different things, like the Devil's Brigade, uh, our World War II veterans in the Devil's Brigade, uh, uh, 163rd, which is 150 years old. In fact, it says it right on the back of the cap. And all of these uh, have a place in our thing. And if you're not interested in that, you can always just be a museum volunteer. Right, and, and you have a nice gift shop out there, so. Oh, great gift shop. Yeah. It's just yeah. unbelievable. All right, so the museum, you've got two missions here. One, go to the wine fair, and two, uh, go to the museum. Yep. It's, it's just that simple. That's exactly right. All right, and we hope to see everybody, everybody at the museum and also at the wine fair uh, at the end of the month, uh, April 29th. A April 29th. All right, and anything, any parting comments to say? No, I just, I, I'm always happy to see people come to the door. Sometimes we get over overcome by the number of people that come in at one time, but that's fine. We've got people who can step out of the background and, and come out and talk to them if they need to, and it's really a self-tour. And we're all very friendly. 
Yeah, very friendly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you bet. All right. Come to the uh, Montana Military Museum Wine Fair. Hope to see you there.